So the first thing we'll do is really break down what the all-in-one loan product is. Like, what is it composed of? Let's mm -hmm. let's start there in terms of what it is and, and how exactly uh, will this work when I, you know, sign into my online banking? Like, like what does it look like? You know what I mean? Like, if you can give us yep. a picture of that. Yeah, great. so ultimately the all-in-one is a checking and savings account that just happens to be paired with your mortgage. So you'll have a checking account there, one, two, three, four. Um, that checking account, for the most part, will always say a balance of zero. And the only time that it won't say a balance of zero is if you actually deposit money that physical day. The way that it works when you're looking at it is you deposit $5,000 into your checking and savings account. Um, and at 11.59 at midnight or at 1159, that money goes from 5,000 to zero. And simultaneously, your mortgage goes from 300,000 to 295. Um, so you're always going to kind of have this weird feeling like, oh, my checking account has zero dollars and zero cents in it. It's a weird feeling. But then once you look at your actual all in one balance, you go, oh, well, now I have $5,000 available in my all in one or 105,000, depending on what you have that line of credit for. Um, you do have some functionalities of linking all of your checking and savings accounts external so you can pay your bills from the all-in-one website to Wells Fargo, to Chase, to whatever um, <clears throat> without having to make it inconvenient. You don't want to transfer money from one bank account to the next bank account to pay your credit cards off. It just simul or, you know, seamlessly pay everything off, um, which is really easy and it's really convenient because now I just go, okay, great, let me pay my cards off and I don't really kind of mess with anything else. I even have my mortgages coming out of my all-in-one. So I have a few rental properties and it's pulling money out um, and I don't even really need to pay attention anymore. It's kind of all on autopilot. I just need to focus on working and you know, once a month paying my credit cards off. Got it, so recap here. The all-in-one loan literally is it's a it's a checking there's a checking account function account mm -hmm. and routing number where that's where i would pay bills out of link accounts set up direct deposits right that's where i can move money exactly the, the savings um is the line it's it's the the line of credit correct yep right so the line of credit is the available equity in the loan that we financed, right? So an all-in-one loan can be a tool that we actually use to actually, we can actually get a property, right, initially. Exactly. Or you can refinance out of a 30-year, 15-year uh, mortgage, conventional, traditional mortgage into an all-in-one, right? Exactly. You can go both ways, right? Um, and so whatever the, so let's say for example, somebody had a $400,000 30 year, you know, mortgage at a, a say 5%, right? Mm -hmm. This whole 400 grand would go into the loan, all in one loan. The rate will change. Yeah. Right? And the traditional mortgage itself gets paid off in one shot it's it's no longer there correct right? done um some other things that can happen is uh in, in certain situations some people might have pmi um escrow right and as it relates to the the all-in-one loan product these things also uh go away in terms of like it having to be automatically taken out of that mortgage payment right correct so now the all in one the all in one does have an opportunity to do less than 20 percent down in some scenarios and that does require a one-time mortgage insurance cost um and then there is no escrow account we're kind of saying why would you want to put money your money into somebody else's account when you could be holding on to it in yep. yours yep and and that also makes a huge difference um, this is something that I, I would tell my clients often is that escrow account, the amount of money that sits there. And I've had multiple, multiple clients, um, have the issue of their escrow being under. So they actually owe more mm -hmm. in, in a 
certain year. Like I just, it's fresh in my mind right now. I have a client that has an escrow account and they were explaining how they owe $3,400 from last year's taxes. So there was mm-hmm. a, you know, it, it went negative, the escrow account. Yeah. So I'm like, number one, you have no control of that. So that means it was a mistake on their end, which now you're paying for, mm-hmm. right? And, and so the what, what happened is their mortgage payment increased by over $400, right? And they have to either come up with $3,400 in one shot to bring the mortgage payment back down or stick to that new increased mortgage payment until it you know, readjust back down. That could be a, a whole, you know, complete mess up in someone's finances. Just you know, oh, like, yeah. wait a minute. <laughs> so having control of more of your money in a scenario like that also, you know, uh, contributes to you paying down that debt even faster. Mm-hmm. Right. Do you agree with that? Yeah, certainly. Awesome. So that is what it is. It's a, it's a checking, it's a savings, it's a loan all in one. So when I log in, I'm going to see, am I going to see one uh, one account that says all in one, or I'm going to see three separate things? You're actually going to see two. You're really going to see two, your checking right? account and the line and your savings account, which is also your line. It's the same account at the end of the day. Gotcha. So and you like- do your d- direct deposit into your checking and savings, sorry, sorry into your checking account. And then that'll sweep into your savings account. And then at any point you can pay your bills from your savings account. Got, oh, okay. So the checking account will technically always be at zero. Unless if it's, that's the day you physically put money into the account or that's the day you're physically paying money out of the account. So if you put $10,000 or $5,000 into the account, you'll see $5,000 in the account. That night it'll go from 5,000 to zero. Alternatively, if you mm. pay five thousand dollars, you'll see a negative five thousand dollar balance in that account, so that it can get sent out to wherever your whatever bill needs to be paid. Okay. So it's like uh, the savings account is like the basket, and then um, you know your checking account is the entity that's going into the basket and pulling money out or putting money in. Okay. So we're gonna we're gonna illustrate this out for my uh, my uh, my audience here, who is uh, they they need it visual, right? Yeah. So let's say I have income, I make say 7K a month, right? Mm-hmm. And that gets split up into two paychecks, $3,500, right? So let's say today is payday. So income in $3,500. Exactly. Instead of that $3,500 going to my Chase Wells Fargo for, for uh, 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 com- you know, convenience, I now have a checking account with all in one, right? Or, or CMG financial, that $3,500 gets directly deposited. So I go to my employer and I can set up direct deposit with this checking account mm-hmm. and that $3,500 where it, where it first lands is in the checking. Correct. Correct. Boom. We stop right there. So that's money going in lands into the checking just like any other bank right Correct. now from there it's say it's um eight nine o'clock in the morning today that's when i typically see the paychecks uh come okay. out. It's fresh right in the morning eight or nine a.m all right so from from there does the checking account automatically now send the 35 to the savings or will that happen at eleven fifty nine p.m at night yes so it'll happen at eleven fifty nine. So then at 1159, your balance will go from 3,500 to zero and deposit that money against what you owe on your mortgage. Okay. Now, does it make a difference if I wake up at 8 a.m. and move the money myself into the line or? or well, you, 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 I uh, can't, it does it automatically. Does it automatically. automatically. You don't have the ability to transfer the money into that, that moment. It'll do it itself. And it doesn't matter if it goes in at, you know, eight o'clock in the morning or 1159, because at midnight, your payment is calculated on your balance. So the course of action is at 1159, it moves all money in. And then at midnight, it calculates your payment for that day. Gotcha. The next day, right? 
Correct. Yeah. At midnight. Uh, okay. the, yeah. So, you know, the first moment in the morning, it's going to go, oh, now your balance is not 400,000. It's, it's 396, 500. Right. Now let's right. calculate payment. Okay. So 1159 money moves from checking. Mm -hmm. And so we'll write checking to savings. Correct. Slash line. Slash line. Okay. At 11 from, from there, let's say the, the day I got paid, right. Which is today, mm -hmm. eight o'clock in the morning, $3,500 came in, but that just so happens to be the same day that I have a thousand dollar, uh, a monthly payment to make towards some other debt. Let's just say, correct. Right. Does that thousand come out of here? The savings? I mean, essentially, yes, it would. But the way that you would see it is it would just then change your 3,500 to 2,500. But yes, it would come out of the savings and go dr directly to pay off whatever you need. And that 3,500 would go in. But when you're looking at the portal, it's just going to look like $2,500 because gotcha. that thousand dollars is just going to be a negative thousand. Yeah. And that's critically important. Um, especially when I am, am working with my clients, um, typically when we deal with say a, uh, a personal line of credit or, or a second lien HELOC, these are some other common tools that we use for uh, debt, debt acceleration. I often tell them that your, your PLOC or your HELOC is separate from the checking account, whereas in all in one, it's together. So you don't have to worry about moving money in and out. But when you're dealing with a personal line of credit or a home equity line of credit in the, in the second position, it's literally separate. So when that 3,500 hits your checking account, I tell them in the morning, as soon as you wake up, you need to manually move that 35 into the PLOC so that it registers that $3,500 went into the line of credit. Mm -hmm. Then from there, if you so happen to have a bill on the same day, you receive your, your paycheck, say a thousand bucks. What I don't want to happen is $3,500 sits in the checking account and then by two o'clock that thousand dollar automatic payment went out. So now you only have 25 and then you transfer 25 to the PLOC. That would be incorrect because you just lost out on a thousand dollars manipulating the cost of borrowing on the PLOC. Right? Mm -hmm. So just to be clear, that's not, that is not what's happening here in the event. $3,500 hits my checking account eight, nine in the morning. And then at like 12, one o'clock, I have a thousand dollar payment that gets automatically, you know, I set up bill pay, let's just say automatically comes out. It'll show going from 35 to 25 in that day, but technically $3,500 still went into the savings line itself. Yes. And, and so it'll, so let's say it was at 400 K at eight, nine in the morning, the savings, the line itself, what I owe 400 is, is, is the balance owed. Right. And then it's, it's not going to show, but $3,500 went in, right. Or it'll, it'll go in by midnight. Correct. Well, so, so that's where it's really specific. It comes in at 1159 and then midnight is when your payment is calculated. So it's the order of operations. Right. And thir so 35 goes in and I have a thousand dollar payment mm -hmm. by 11:59 p.m. My actual balance should be three ninety seven five hundred. Is that correct? correct? Yep. Gotcha. And so it it registered thirty five went into the line. It registers that no matter if I have a a a you know money coming out as money's coming in you know because I got like you know, auto auto bills and automatic bills set up so I don't have to worry about that 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 saves a. a a major uh, a headache, right? Trying oh, yeah. to figure that out. That's that does save time. When I'm dealing with people with PLOCs and HELOCs, there's a methodology, there's a discipline that we must have, um, and we must be aware of when money's coming in and out, uh, so that we don't miss out. And I often will educate my clients: Hey, see if you can move that automatic bill instead of it hitting on the same day you get your your paycheck that have that bill come out a day later, two days later, right? As this, late as possible, really. Right, or as late as, right, as far out as possible from when money's coming in. This way it manipulates that rate. But again, we don't have to worry about that here in Correct. this scenario. So money came in, $3,500, boom, hits the checking early in the morning, let's say, 
by midnight that 3500 is going into the line and if i have any any automatic bills or, or or payments you had mentioned that it's actually coming out of the line not the yes check. correct that's where your routing number and everything is going to end up being to where you're paying uh, money at so then this was this was a, a incorrect right well, so it goes from your savings to your checkings and then gets paid out of your checking. That's how it, it pulls. That's what I'm saying. Your checking is like the entity grabbing the money, moving it into the checking, which is going to be the pulling it out. Which then pays the bills. Correct. So, okay. it, so, I, mean, it's kind so of, I had that right. I yes. had that right. It is kind of like both, I guess, at the end of the day, sure. um, based off the order of operations, because your money is not in your checking, it's in your savings. But the entity that's pulling it out is the checking account. Is the checking right? Because you need to have a uh, account and routing number to pay any bill that cannot be paid with a credit card. Correct. Right. So, and let's just go into the the credit card now that we just threw that in there. If I have a credit card that I can run my groceries, bills, uh, phone bills, subscriptions, anything and everything that could be paid with a credit card, I can attach or or link the credit card to my all-in-one and mm -hmm. my all-in-one automatically pays the statement balance on the due date of that credit card each and every month this way i never you have to set it up but you can do that right do that correct you can go in there and set up your payment schedule beautiful all right so bill pay we're linking accounts right and this is the flow once it's set up that you're done once you've set up bill pay once you've linked your accounts you're done you literally don't have to worry about um when your paychecks come in that's automatic mm -hmm. Money out that's automatic paying bills that's automatic saving money that's automatic right so this becomes um your your ultimate strategy uh your ultimate foundation strategy uh, arguably where instead of having a savings account right or an emergency fund or sinking funds these are all the terminologies people use right to save money or plan for um, bills like annual bills and expenses mm -hmm. or if you're an envelope person people who stick cash in envelopes that's like that's archaic in my mattress opinion. Money. Yeah, yeah mattress money this is this is old guys we got to really you know this is how you truly pay off debt that much faster even if numbers are the same it's about how you move money you're creating a velocity you're increasing the velocity of your money right and when you do that even without increasing income you actually pay off debt faster if all numbers are the same right yeah.